All right, we got Drew Dollar, Corey Heim on the outside, a couple of green. Toyotas. Green, green. Green flag is in the air. We're racing at Talladega. And we're under caution here for the first time today. Take a look at what happened. Obviously, a cut right rear. It was the 01 of Tim Monroe. Let's see what happened. See, he was, run he was running by himself, and that tire goes down, probably ran over something. Tire goes down. Brad Smith really did a nice job in the red number 48 going to the bottom to avoid Tim. I think Tim should be able to get back out there, put a new tire on it, and go try again. Yeah, just keeping it out of the wall. That's, that's huge, and he was able to do that. Ten away. Five. Got a spin behind you here. Take it out. Take it away with all. And we have a sp spin on the restart there. A.J. Moyer goes around. Haven't but, thrown the yellow yet. I think a great call by the ARC officials not to throw the yellow. Caution will come out if that car obviously doesn't get going, but I think you would you would create so much havoc if you would have thrown a caution or waved off the restart when everyone's ready for it. So great call to keep them going. Let's see what happened here on that restart. You seem like you locked up the brakes there, trying not to run in the back of the car in front of him. Uh, caution's out now, but uh, I don't know if he was waiting for it or not, but. I'm sure there's a lot of people on the boulevard laying in the grass, and he laid in the grass there for a while waiting for it. <laughs> Third caution of the day. You see damage you to the left front corner, so he obviously ran in the back of somebody at some point, if not on that restart. Yes. You go to green. Corey Heim is ready for that teammate restart. He's pushing, pushing Drew Dollar, trying to get him out as, as far as he can to, to suck his help forward. Drew Dollar with a nice push out there, drops to the bottom right in front of Sanchez. They've been the partners from the beginning, and they've got the six. Raja Karuth coming through and just Raja's second super speedway race. That word energy and speaking of, we got a big crash on the front stretch. A few cars oh. around and another one gets hit. Looks like the 10 of Richard Garvey. Still wrecking. 69. Scott Melton involved. Tony Breidinger. Tony Breidinger comes to a stop in the infield. Eric Caudell destroyed race cars. Yeah, Tim Richmond is on pit road. He was involved as well. See what happened. Where, where did it go wrong? See Tony. That Tony's this white car on the inside. Oh, she got run into from behind. Very hey. similar to what we saw in practice yesterday. I believe that was the 10 car, Richard Garvey, that okay. ran in the back of Tony. And obviously, really hard hit there on the 7 car in the 69. But yeah, that from that angle, that definitely looked like a just a really bad push, really poorly timed push gone wrong there, coming off of turn four. Very similar to what we saw yesterday. That little tap from behind. She gets sideways. Yeah, Brayton Laster with the 0 3 with nowhere to go and watch. Oh my gosh. Great camera shot. But wow. Man, that's, man huge. that's Richard Garvey riding up over. Looks like Lester's. a stadium truck. Mm. Eric Caudell obviously involved in the seven. Some pretty hard hits there. You, you hit pretty hard at 180 or 90 miles an hour. Yeah, no kidding. And then this is the worst, worst case scenario. You got the seven car coming back up on the racetrack and uh, gets, gets T boned. So. Just the butt kicker on board. Yes, it is. Oh. Well, it happens so fast, doesn't it? Kicking the pants all right. Mm. Inches for sure. Watching it and seeing how much movement are in those two lines makes me nervous. What's it like when you're a driver in oh. that? Oh, almost. Tell you what, Dale Dye's got a fast car, oh, and I think he's, he's really good at pushing behind him. because he was able to stay super close to the six car. So I look for him to, to not be wanting to stay behind. I think that was a product of that. The six oh, car pulled up in front of him. Didn't want it. We got a back. caution oh. for debris. Caution for debris. We're Raja Karuth in the six. You see it here. Hold on to yeah, it. Yeah, the 43 of Daniel Dye locked on to the six. Raja did a great job saving that car. Oh, man wants the lead. I love it. It looks like they're going to coordinate a teammate restart here and trying to get in front of each other. And we got Corey Heim. He'll be sneaking up there. See how this uh, see how this plays out. We next talk about it. So, since emergency, you're exactly right, Austin. The next flag is in, in, ends it. It could be one lap. It could be 14 laps. Got to jump by the six. Almost almost too fast. He's going to be too far away from his help. And I would say the smart thing would be to stay up in front of his teammate. And teammate says, "No thanks. I want the lead." Corey Heim 
Lines up in second now. I think the outside lane's going to have a little bit of energy all the way to the back straightaway. Nick Corey has the team back behind him. Gus Dean, will they pull out and try to move by the two of Nick Sanchez? Nick Sanchez out front, but Corey Heim, the one that they've all been trying to beat and keep behind them, is creeping. Look how, he look how they're pushing. Corey Heim going back. I don't even know if that was on purpose. I think that huge run from the 6 and the 43 got right back to the 20 and shoved him out to the outside lane. You're going to have to work extra hard, especially when you don't have the help, and being able to get that, that outside lane with some energy, with some compression. And you got two really good cars behind you with Brett Holmes and Nick Sanchez, and you got to be able to continue that run. I think the outside lane's got to stay committed to each other for, for at least a few laps here as you see the pushings get really aggressive. Brett Holmes getting impatient. Oh. Is it too soon? Oh, wrecking in the lead. Come on. Daniel Dye goes away, goes around, tries to save at the 43. Good save. No, that's not what he wants, but it's a good save keeping that car and still has a shot to shot to continue the race. But and that's the caution. That's oh yeah, being told caution that is out. Race. That's it. I right, need the replay. See who the leader is. Remember, dark officials will go to whatever video they have to determine who's leading, who's ahead at the moment of the caution flag. We'll have to go back and look to see exactly who was ahead when the caution was displayed. And actually, it's when the we're hearing that Nick Sanchez is going to be crowned the winner, and the we 23 the of Brett Holmes will be second. Nick Sanchez. We talked about him all race long. He got shuffled back with two laps before that caution. That is awesome. Thank you, guys. Where did he come from? How did he pull that off right there? This is exactly the moment yeah, that see the Arca time stamp on the bottom of the looked screen. at the timestamp. Yes, yeah. and the two is clearly ahead. How about the 44th Thad Moffat are going to be fourth? What a job, though, by Nick Sanchez. He stayed up front all race and kept himself in contention. Let's see what happened here with the with the 43. Obviously, Brett Holmes gets a big run. Yeah, Brett was not going to stay in line. He was going to try to go to the outside, I think, of the 43 to try to get around him. And he tries to cover the 20. Just a, just a, just too late on that block. And oh, Nick Sanchez threaded the needle between the three of them, three wide, to end up getting the win of the race. That's pretty exciting. How did the 43 of Daniel die wreck at the front of the field and did not take anybody else yeah, with him? That's up? amazing. It's good heads up driving. Here they are going in the corner. You see, we got a good run going on the 20. Down to the quarter here on entry. Down to the quarter. But now the 43 is going to move off? to the outside. Stay off. Stay off. Inside quarter. Inside. He's inside. He's inside. He's inside. To hear the spotter saying he was inside. He never got the clear signal from the spotter to move down in front of Corey Hine. And that's that's the thing about the communication piece. You know, it's it's really important to, to understand that and expect that information. And um, obviously they're racing for the win. The emotions are high and trying to trying to get it done. And um, just a little bit late on on both of those blocks. And um, but he, was, he put himself in position to try and win the race. And um, Nick Sanchez was able to recover from getting shuffled and come home with a win.